second, third, fourth turning, a high, an awakening, an unraveling, and a crisis. The best way to think about this is an awakening of the time in which society reshapes the inner world, and a crisis is a time in which we reshape the outer world. We all recall the American high, right? This was a time when institutions were strong, individualism was weak. We all knew where we wanted to go as a nation, but first minorities or people who felt outside the mainstream felt outside the mainstream. Bernie Carrington once called these the great barbecues of American history, right? We, we all recall this period, maybe from the end of World War II to the assassination of President Kennedy. We've had earlier eras like this in our history. We all recall the, the consciousness revolution, which is really what we call the second turning. Um, this is a time when people, institutions are attacked in the name of individual autonomy, spiritual authenticity. Just when society is having its high tide of public progress, suddenly everyone tires of the social discipline. Everyone wants to rediscover themselves again. Uh, we recall, you know, we date this really from the student rebellions and, and inner city rebellions of the, of the mid-60s, maybe to the tax revolts of the early 80s. The theme there is throwing off social obligations. And interestingly, many historians call the consciousness revolution America's fourth or fifth great awakening, depending on when we want to start your count. So it's part of a tradition in American history to have these periods of, of cultural upheaval fired by young people. The third turning we call an unraveling. It's in many ways the opposite of a high. In the third turning, institutions are weak and discredited. Individualism is strong and flourishing. I go around the country and I often go into bookstores to see what people are reading. And you find today that all the most upbeat books are all about me, myself, and I, right? How is that? All the most downbeat books are about what we share collectively in common. You know, books like The End of Community, The End of Politics, The End of Marriage, right? That that's typical of this kind of era. You look back at decades like the 1920s, the 1850s, 1760s, decades of bad manners, decades of cultural cynicism, cultural exhaustion, weak civic authority. These are typical of these eras. And history teaches that unravelings and third turnings ultimately issue into what we call fourth turnings. These are eras in which society tears down and rebuilds outer world institutions the ground up, almost always in response to a perceived threat to the nation's survival. If history doesn't provide such a threat, fourth turning leaders, meaning in this case boomers, will manufacture one, will conjure one up in order to mobilize the, uh, collective action and to get the country moving. Uh, civic authority revives, the culture reacquires a public purpose, often in the form of propaganda, and people begin to refine themselves as parts of larger communities and groups. We've had these eras again before in our history. These have been eras often where we solve huge national and even global problems. They're not all bad news. They can be huge areas of opportunity. But they've always been eras in which we redefine what we are as a country. And when you think about how each generation is going to push us into a new mood. Every turning, each generation pushes us into a new mood. Think about the generational aging that's about to go on. Think of boomer leaders with no one older to restrain them anymore. You know, those aging Aquarians, right? Priest warriors. Think about Generation X in midlife, making all the decisions. Right? Just do it. Very little political uh, sort of inertia or attachment to this generation. And think of millennials, a team-playing generation for whom Americans will want a much better long-term, permanently secured future.